Hey there, YouTubers. This is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Thanks for tuning in. Today, it might be a little bit uh, long of a session. Uh, we are actually going to create our first report, and it's going to be pretty sweet. We're going to go through, and we're going to do an employee list report. And what we're going to do is we're going to get certain columns that we want to be in the report, and we will exclude the others. So... And we're going to do something special with the social. We're going to do XXX hyphen XX hyphen and the last four for that. Uh, so let's get started right away on building our report. We want a nice big button. So I click on the toolbox and, and excuse me, Alt F11 is how we get into the Visual Basics editor, of course. And then I click on the button here and I want to put a button right about there. And I want it to say run employee. EMP report will say okay and uh, take this cancel button and we'll change the font because it just looks funky being so much larger than the other one alright well it's still a little bigger but oh well uh, here we go so, so run employee report and we'll name that button btn run EMP that's good enough so, what do we do first? Double click here. We're going to declare our worksheet as sort DB. So we're going to say dim, let's say SD sheet as worksheet. And we'll set SD sheet equals this workbook dot sheets. What was the name? It was sort DB. And the capitalization does not matter here. Okay, so then we need to do our LR to get our last row so that we can, um, well, actually, let's see. Let's create a new sheet, and we'll give this one a name. We'll call it em employee, uh, we'll just say underscore RPT, employee report. Okay, that's going to be our report page here. Let's set up our columns. Which ones do we want? We might want the employee ID, the name, social... And we don't need status. Um, and date of birth and date of employment. Hey, let's just say that's all we want. We want a report that only gives us our active employees from this database. So let's see if we can just copy that and paste values only. All right. And we'll uh, just click these out a little bit. Name, of course, is going to need a little more space than the others. Click here and Control B to make them bold. So now we have a starting area. Alt F11 back to our menu, and here is our report here. And in fact, uh, typically I would advise that you run a report from a module and not directly from the user form, but it's not necessary that you have to do that. So let's uh, let's um, let's just get started then. We're going to say one thing that you need to do is you have your um, you have one loop going on that is looping through your original content, your original database, and then I always have another variable. I use X for some reason. I just do it. I use X to loop through your first page. So X is going to be two, three, four, and then five, and just keep looping all the way until it reaches fifty. But then I always have Y starting at 2, and only when the conditions are met and it fills in this row Y, which in this case would be 2, then Y equals Y plus 1. And then it becomes row 3. And if the conditions are met ever, when, when looping here, if something is true, then they want to take that line and shove details of it right here. So let's go ahead and see how that works. We have SD sheet, which we've nicknamed sort database sheet. We're also going to use employee report sheet, so we're going to have to declare that to make our lives easier. So I put a comma here and I say ER sheet. That's what I'll call this one. Also as worksheet. Then we're going to set ER sheet equals this workbook dot sheets and it was EMP underscore RPT end quote in parentheses. Now we've declared those 
and if we type er sheet dot anything, you see that it will recognize that as a worksheet object and give us lots and lots of drop down options here, which makes life much easier. So y we are going to say is our starting row, which is column two. So as you can see, we don't want to start on row one or we'll start overwriting our headers. We'll start on two. All right, so our starting row. And uh, we're gonna say, well, where's our, uh, where's our loop here? We need to get the bottom row of our database so we won't be going till a billion. We just wanna go to row 50. So let's get that now. Back here, we're gonna say, um, well, for, uh, let's see, LR code. Now that's that's if you have type pilot here. You can see down I have type pilot and it makes my life so much easier. LR code space or enter. Uh, let's see, LR code. There it is. Okay, I hit enter. And it copied and it took this from my my listing. So we're going to say if SD sheet dot cells and all this jive is uh, row one, then we want LR to be SDLR. Actually, I'm going to use to show the it's the last row from the SD sheet. Okay, SD sheet dot cells blah blah blah. Okay, so either it's going to be it's never going to be row one is what we're saying here. It's going to be either two or it's just going to be whatever it is. Which in this case uh, it would be it would shoot up to row 50 like so so now we have our sort our, our database sheets last row trapped in this little variable here so we could say our loop is going to be so for x equals 2 all the way to sdlr whatever row that happens to be and of course we have to say next x or next whatever variable we shoved in there the numeral is going to be x each time Let's go ahead and, uh, well, we're not there just yet. Let's, let's, uh, what's, what are our conditions? We don't really have any, uh, except that we want it, the person to be active. So our status is going to be equal to A. Uh, let's get that out of the way here. So we're going to say if SD sheet dot cells and then row X column comma uh, column four equals capital A then and we learned in a previous uh, lesson that you could use U case to automatically capitalize the A in your analysis so if the capitalization of this is capital A then well they're active and we'll go ahead and continue and we'll of course unindent and say end if and then we have this beautiful indention here. So all that to say we're looping through every row here one at a time and if column four's uh, row x whatever row x is on is an A then we're going to use it and here's what we're going to do if it is a capital A. We're going to put it on the ER sheet. There's my note to myself. So ER sheet dot cells Y row Y starts with two and it's going to increment later. So Y column uh, one equals SD sheet dot cells X comma and I believe we're doing employee ID for both. In another future video, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically change the row uh, numbers using variables here instead of numbers, but you have to label them all. Uh, very cool, very useful, especially if your boss comes back and says, well, I need you to add this column and this column and this column, please. Uh, it would be quite a headache if all you had is a bunch of numbers and you don't even know what they mean. We happen to know that employee ID is 1 on both sheets. So we're good to go there. Then... That we're going to copy and paste this to make it easier. Okay, there's all five. So, er sheet dot cells y comma two. That would be name, 
and that would come from column two and the other one too. So those can both line up. So there's the name. Then column three, four, and five will do this way. Let's see, what's three is social, four database, five data of employment. So um, social is three, but then you got four, five is actually over here on one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you have column three and then six, seven. Let's go back and quickly report that to our page here. Column three, then six, then se oh, oops, then six, then seven. Okay, and then we're going to say y equals y plus one. And how can we do that? Well, because we don't want it to always be row two on this sheet right here. We want it to go uh, y equals y plus one, which is the same as saying two equals two plus one. So now the y is going to be three, and then, well, you'll see. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to hit F8. Uh, well, what have I done here? If I run the report, let's double click on the button here and put a stopper right there. Now I feel better about that. I'm going to hit F5, and uh, when I hit Run Report, it's going to stop me right at my stop marker. Hit F8, and okay, so column 50 is on this sheet. And let's see, uh, Y equals 2. Now we're looping from 2 to 50 on that sheet. So let's see, if that is A, and it sure is, then ER sheet, that's right there on column 2, or column 1, excuse me, row 2 which is y. Uh, 1 equals... Do, 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 do. So let's let's test this. Hit F8. And that's going to be fake 11 guy. And this is going to be his social. I'm going to let that slide, but we'll edit that in a moment. Date of birth. Oh, it comes up as a serial number. We'll have to fix that. And the date of employment comes up there as a serial number. y equals y plus 1. So y is about to be... Three. Now, let's do the next one. Is that an active person? Yes. So, uh, now you notice row Y on our report sheet is now three. So, it's able to take this and shove it on there. So, I'll keep going a few more times. You can see that it's going down the list of the active people and taking their information and plopping it on there. I'm going to hit F5 and complete our report. Okay, so here's our report. Let's click here on the D and E, and we're going to hit Control-1. And we need to format this as a date, because right now it's just a serial number. Hit OK. So that's pretty. All right. Now, the last thing that we really need to do is we need to dynamically clear out our last report. And then we need to make sure that the social is hidden except for the last four. So let's get started on those two tasks. So, double click on our button. Here's, here's what we have so far. Uh, we need to get the last row of our report sheet, not just the database sheet. So I'm going to highlight this, Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. And we know that ER sheet, and ERLR is what we're looking for, just to make them uniform. So ER sheet, ER sheet, ERLR, ERLR. So that'll get the bottom row for the employee report last row here and then we'll say um, er sheet dot cells or excuse me let's just use the range object er sheet dot range we're going to say a2 all the way through let's see d no no e quote and ampersand and erlr okay hope that makes sense we're going to take a2 all the way to E, and in this case, I don't know, it would be 24 in this last report that ran. So A2 through E, 24, dot clear contents. Okay? And that command will clear the last report. Let's label it. Okay, whoops. Clear the last report. So let's go to that point. Uh, whoops. Let's hit F5 here. Running the report, taking only active people, getting the last row here on the report is 24. Uh, let's see, A2 through E, 24.clearContent, so 
it's going to clear all that out except for the headers because we don't want to do row one, row two through that. And it cleared it out. So there's our last report. Bye bye. And now we're going to go through our loop. And when we get to the social security number, we're going to do a little something there. So there's the thing. There's the name. Here's the social. So I'm going to give a little space here. All right. Now we're going to take the. We're going to take some text here. So I'm going to give myself a little space to do that. Quote x x x hyphen x x uh, hyphen end quote. And we're going to join that with. And what do we want? Do we really want the social here? No. We want the rightmost four digits. So we're going to take the right function, which is built into VBA. You don't have to do application dot uh, worksheet function dot right. You can just say right of this comma four. We want the last four of the on the right side of this string. So that will, if I hit F8, it will yield x x x hyphen x x hyphen last four of the social. And then I can hit F5 because we know everything else is going to be just dandy. Hit F5 and uh, hmm. let's run it again. Last thing I want to do, maybe the first thing I want to do actually, is uh, somewhere in here I want to say me and me means the current user form that we're in writing codes in. Me dot hide why do I want to do that? Because it's in the way. I can't click. I can't click on the worksheet or access it because it's not hidden. So let's run this uh, all the way through. Undo there. Let's see, clear the contents. Rerun the report. Okay. But now the user form hides itself. How nice is that? So here's our list of current employees. In fact, we'll go to page layout and we will go and click on that little ticker there. We're going to say header and footer. Let's do a custom header. We'll say um, active employee list. And we'll highlight that. Edit the, we'll make it bold and how about 16. And then hit OK. Let's do a custom footer. How about uh, this space OF space that. That means page, let's say one of three or something. And over here we'll put the date. Let's say um, let's do a print preview of that. It's pretty awesome. Control P, print preview. So that looks pretty good. Active employee list. And then uh, you want to go to page layout, and you want to go to sheet right here. Rows to repeat on top. We want to make that our column headers. That way, if there's a bunch of pages, this will appear at the top of each report. At any rate, we're really, really close to running this. Let's just hit F5. And um, I'm just going to run the employee report right now. Click it, and voila. Oops, we have a marker. Goodness. Okay, F5. And there's our report right there. Let's click here. Let's do that again. Just for effect. Run employee report. Okay. Now, let's test that because I want to make Mr. Dude, he's going to be active from here on out. So let's see if Mr. Dude now appears on our report. Let's go back and run it. Hit F5 to open your user form. And click Run Employee Report. And oh, if this stupid thing would get out of the way, my goodness. Anyway, we can see that Mr. Dude is now on the report because he's active. Thanks for watching, and we will uh, do some more fun things with this report when we return.